Radio. They're coming. Fitzy and Whipper. Their focus is extremely short. How have I even got a job here? On Nova. Hello there, podcast listeners. This brings us to the end of the first week back of 2022. Good one, Jess. Thanks so that much. was awesome. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. And um, Riddle Time is back, which is awesome. Sure is, which means Mandy is back. I spoke to Mandy on the phone behind the scenes. I said, how did you go, Mandy? Have you been thinking of some riddles? She said, oh, Jess, I've got so many riddles, it's not even funny. And I thought, Ma- was that a good Mandy voice? Yes, it was, actually. I, I thought, Mandy, sling them my way. I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Which you'll hear today. Maybe she could officially join the Riddle Time factory. That would be good. I mean, we do have a lot of workers in there, but we do not pay um, the the right rate, so we try and keep that quiet. Also coming up, Only Just Realised, another one of our favourite segments. It is, and I've only just realised that when Whipper says he's going on a boys' weekend and they're all wearing matching shirts, that they're not kidding. Oh, yeah, and they look ridiculous. Fitzy and Whipper. It's not April Fool's Day, is it? That's April. Yeah, that's the 1st of April. I'm just going through this story, trying to work out if this is a joke or not. 21st of January, mate. Okay, I've got to check the calendar. This story will blow you away. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened in the story, and then I'm going to tell you why I thought this was a joke and I can't get my head around it. There was a man that was shot uh, the other night in Wodonga. Now, what's interesting was this bloke turned up to the party, shot the other guy, and they then caught the bloke who pulled the trigger on this bloke. So they then, the story goes to talk about that homicide detectives have identified the man who shot the other guy as Ben Stiller. What, killed him? Killed him. Wow. His name's Ben Stiller. Right. Yeah. The man that was killed. Oh, don't. His name is Dwayne Johnson. If you smell what the rock is. Ben Stiller has shot Dwayne Johnson. I mean, Dwayne Johnson is quite now, a... That, that's that's a regular name. Oh, that's mm. a, so I can understand that That's one. not a regular name. Dwayne Johnson. You reckon? Yeah. yeah. yeah you reckon sure. that's a regular name? Johnson. Johnson is a very... Johnson is, yeah, to have Dwayne Johnson. I reckon Ben Stiller is more of a rarer name. Mm. The fact that Ben Stiller shot Dwayne Johnson is the most amazing part, obviously, to this story. I don't know what happened. Maybe there was an argument over, no, I've got the celebrity name. No, I'm the bigger celebrity name. I'm not sure. You wouldn't probably shoot someone over that. But to read, I had to read the story about three times last night <laughs> going, hang on a minute, so Ben Stiller has shot Dwayne The Rock Johnson. How has this happened? Well, not The Rock. Was the so, yeah, we see, we don't know him as Dwayne Johnson, do we? No, the you Rock. know him as The Rock. The Rock, yeah. yeah. But people do know what his name is, of course. And these are the dangers of living with a celebrity name. I mean, when you're in court and this bloke goes to jail and his name's Ben Stiller, be ripped apart. Absolutely ripped apart. Why? Not physically. At least he's good at his job. Like, if you were the worst comedian in the world, Ben Stiller's not the worst comedian. Mm. Imagine going to jail and you were John Stamos. You'd get ribbed a bit, wouldn't you? John Stamos? <laughs> yeah. What's wrong with John Stamos? Well, he's sort of like on that cusp of, like, are you cool or are you just... He was really, really cool. A, that's what I mean. really cool. You're still confused whether or not you like him. There'd be a lot of Michael Jacksons out there. Yep. I went to school with a Michael Jackson. Uh, my husband's ex-boss was a Michael Jackson. Seriously? Yeah. If your surname is Jackson, I mean, as parents, what are you going with mm. there? I mean, and the Jackson- there'll only ever be one Michael. Yeah. Name your kids something else. I mean, it's a, such a basic, silly name anyway. There, it's a great name. It's a really great name. It's You're a right, silly Pitsy. name and for I, all basic I'm, people. It's the biggest compliment you've given me. There is only one Michael, and he's right here, guys. There was a bloke that used to work work down at the cafe. What's and in his, your ranch, mate? And his name was Cameron Diaz. Oh, a guy. It's a guy, and his name was Cameron Diaz. Because Cameron was more of a guy's name until she became so famous. Now you think of it as both. You wouldn't be wrapped, would you? No. I'm Cameron Diaz. No, you're not. You're a bloke. What are you talking about? That ain't 2410. If you've got a name like this, if you've got a celebrity name. Celebrity name. And it's been a battle over the years, people making jokes. The Michael Jackson I went to school with, he was a bit younger than me, but he was not a very fit kid. So couldn't dance? Couldn't dance. He was huge. Yeah, see, that was quite the townhouse. Um, I don't know what he looks like these days, but he was the opposite to Michael Jackson. Chubbier people can dance. Yeah, oh, for I'm sure. I've seen you try, plus those videos on TikTok. Well, he's saying fat dance. people can't dance. Yeah. Like white men can't jump, fat people can't dance. Different film. Well, you know the Pharrell, no the Pharrell film clip? You know that happy one? Yeah. Yep. There's some really good dancers in and there. And are they fat, are they? are carrying a little bit. Are they? Yeah. yeah. MDG, thoughts on the topic? 
went to a movie. I uh, went to uni with a mate called Sam Worthington. Still, still mates with him. Yeah. He went to the movies in Bondi, and Sam Worthington was in the same session <laughs> You're with me. Lara Bingle, and he was like, "I've just, I've got to go up and say hello." Yeah. So anyway, went up, I said, "Hey, my name, my name is Sam Worthington as well." He said the movie star Sam Worthington was so intrigued yeah. and so interested uh, yeah. that it was my mate that had to end the conversation because he was like, "Okay, away. well, I think we've, we've sort of squeezed the juice out of this lemon, it's and there's great. nothing really left it's just today." Because you would have, you'd have to get your How driver's funny. license out as well yeah. to prove it. Yeah, and but I, I would if someone came up to you with the same name, you feel like you have yeah. an instant connection because you would, and you'd go, "Well, how's it been for you?" How's your journey been to this yeah. point and oh, on this to day? to be my lesser person. No, just being, we're living the same life in a sense that we're so familiar with that name, it's everything to us. I don't reckon the Groot's mate got to go home with Lara Bingle. No, but at the same time, he had to cut the movie star Sam Worthington <laughs> off and go, all right, mate, enjoy your film. Yeah. I mean, I love that. Stop talking now, mate. We get it. We've both got the yeah, same name. <laughs> Ready to hit the road this summer? It's time to what if it. Visit whatif.com to plan and book your accommodation, flights, activities, even car hire. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable. Booking cancellation windows apply. What if? It's Aussie for travel. Check government advisories before booking and travelling. Hey, uh, branding things. And, you know, artists do this with their work. I mean, if, you, if there is a painting, they will usually sign it down the bottom. Yeah, just in the right hand. Oh, no, Actually, he, how's this? What do you got? Huey rings me the other day. Tommy, mm. I'm going to do this over the weekend. Yeah. He's found this coin, a $2 coin from 1998, and it's got this tiny HH symbol on it, right? Mm -hmm. Which we've done research. He's done research because someone at school was talking about it. And it represents the initials of Horst Hahn, the Royal Australian Mint Chief Engraver, at the time the coins were first introduced. Right. Back in 1998. Have a look at that, Sarah. How cool Se to have your initials engraved on a coin. On a $2 coin. Wow. There, some guy's selling them for like $10,000 each on eBay. Huey's found one. Find another Hang one. Hang on. Are there, are there that few of them? Well, this is the thing. I don't know. I said, don't get your hopes up too much, but he's already trying to work out what he's going to buy with his oh, $10,000. Wow. <laughs> hey, you know, yesterday we were talking about NFTs and trying to explain it, says. Yeah. Uh, overnight there was announced that Gucci are releasing NFTs, right? There's 250 of them. And the NFTs are also a piece of clothing that you can wear in the metaverse. So when you're a metaverse character, yeah. right? So when you're a computerized version of yourself, sir, you can actually wear a computerized Gucci outfit in right. your metaverse. Which is person. awesome, but then I'm still walking down the street wearing just jeans. Well, like, that's, it's that's, like That's the thing. Isn't that extraordinary? People yeah. will spend money on this so that their second person or themselves in another world can wear a Gucci shoe. I shoot. love how you're I so like, into it, but I'm it's so it. ridiculous. It is. It's so ridiculous. That's why I, uh, I'm excited by it. Like, it's <laughs> madness. It's absolute Mental. madness. Um, yeah, so branding things. Um, this is an interesting one that we need to bring up. But um, a British surgeon has been uh, struck off the medical register. Dr. Simon Brammel will not be a doctor anymore because they have found out that he has branded every one of his patients' livers huh? as he's yeah. finished the operation. With what? His initials. Yeah, but what? Like just with the has laser he's burnt it in bur a bit? Burnt it in there. That's a bit oh odd. God. I mean, I know you love your work, and I don't mind this. You're not an artist, Do mate. Dr. Brammel probably thinks he's a bit of an artist. Simon Brabbel. Well, in a way, they are, aren't they? I yeah. mean, it's... Well, how, there's a craft. It's a they... very delicate operation. But how did they figure this out? Well, I think they got evidence from one of the livers. And, and they... what they said to him, if we cut open all the people you've mm -hmm. operated on, will you have initialed them all? Well, it, it's happened since 2013 to 2017. Oh, that's a lot of people. And he's been caught out. I like, mean... I don't, do you know what? For me, if you knew... All he has to do is be honest. Mm. Okay, fair enough. If you want to put your initials on there, maybe knock a couple of hundred bucks off the operation. I'll yeah, let you do it. I'll let you tag the Who corner. Who cares if you've got SB on your, on your liver? Do you know what? The only time there would be a payoff if would be if there was a liver transplant. 
So you open it up yes. and you go, oh, you've got a Simon, what's his name? Simon, yes. Br- uh, Simon Brammel. You've, oh, oh, you've got an original Brammel. Oh, my God. When did you get that done? That's fantastic. Well, the person receiving it, hey, we've got great news. The operation went well and you've got a Simon Brammel. Wow. I had no Imagine idea. That's an original. Just a group of people just sitting, oh my standing God. around a liver on the floor. Oh, my God. Oh my Look God, at that's that it. Brammel. I've only, ever, I've only ever heard of one. I didn't expect to get one. Actually smells like a Brammel from oh. here. Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, congratulations. What an artist. Well, it, it, well also, done, Simon. Or you would love to find an alcoholic who's just <laughs> who's just absolutely rinsed their liver. Yep. And you just go, wow, I just, that. Yeah, I, thought it was a, I just thought it was street art. It's an actually, actually, it's a Banksy. It's a Banksy. You've ruined the Simon. It's a Simon Banksy. You... <laughs> Let's talk about one of the great Aussies of all time, Shane Keith Warren. There is only one. This is great because Warney, good areas, uh, his son Jackson has posted this uh, on Instagram. I don't know if you saw it, guys, but there's Warney's. At the Crown Casino, actually, uh, in Melbourne. And he he's loves the Crown. Loves the Crown, mate. Lives the Crown. Um, he's been money laundering there for years. <laughs> yes, yeah. not, but you'll find him in the high rollers. He's yeah. not afraid of the old mahogany room. There he is, having a bit of brekkie, uh, and he's got um, some spaghetti on toast there for That's his breakfast. tin spaghetti for sure. Look yes, at the quality of that. And this is the interesting part about it. Warney takes a can of tin spaghetti wherever he goes because that's what he likes on his breakfast. So that is at a restaurant where he's turned up. The only thing he ordered there was the coffee and the toast. He put the spaghetti on the toast. Cold? White toast. White toast. White toast. He's got the cappuccino yeah. with a bit of chocolate on top. Hasn't changed since the 90s, what a has kid. he? And, and the and the tin, Would it be, be a Milo? I reckon that's a Milo. Well, tin spaghetti and baked beans are very high in salt. There's a bit of sugar yeah. in Mate, there as not, well. They're, they're not, not good for you. They're not bad for you, calorie-wise. Well, baked beans are better because baked of beans. the bean. It's the sauce. But hang on. So does he just crack the tin cold and tip it on? He cracks the tin cold, yeah, and just tips it on, Why and then he's ready he to go. Have well, the spaghetti at the buffet, they have the same thing. It goes on to say that Warney will take uh, his tin spaghetti, uh, which he loves, but I don't know what the brand is, it doesn't say here. He'll take it all around the world with him. Well, remember Jackson on SAS? Mm. He, he tried vegetables for the first time, remember? That's right. That's he's, terrible. he's got a very limited diet. How have you never eaten vegetables? Wow. What world have you come what, from? From Shane Warne. Shane Warne's world. <laughs> Did you see Where his, we all um, want to be. his new movies out, I think, uh, this week? Worn next out? Week? No, Shane. No, no, yeah, it's just called cinemas. Shane. Yeah, 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 in cinemas. It's just called Shane. And it's all about him. And he talks about the fact, which I thought a bit bizarre, where he said, I love my family, but they're always set, going to be second to cricket. And the oh. kids are all saying, we're fine with it. We know that. That was what do you Dad. Mean? We grew yeah, up with well, that. And he's like, Cricket is my number one thing. It had to be for me to be this good. That's why Family it was and number two. If you if you're married to a cricketer, or if your old man's a cricketer, mm. he's never home. No, they're always away. You look at Davy Warner. We we spoke to Candace about yeah, it. Three hundred days of the year he's gone. Well, that's right. Leno, you were talking about Ash Barty and Vegemite before, because she is the face of Vegemite here in yeah. Australia as Australia's favourite daughter. Yeah, that all came about because she had the, um, you know, the squeezy tube you yeah. can get? Yeah. She said in an interview that that was the one thing she always travelled with so she could have Vegemite on toast wherever she went. And is Vegemite it, went, Woo-hoo. There's a bit of a game you're plan there. Me. Smart. When you're the mm. number one, but yeah, I mean, what is she going to... She's going to have like a little mm-hmm. tiny BMW car, Hot Wheels car with her the I whole time. I take her everywhere I go, guys. Oh, I just, you wouldn't believe... Oh, you want to sponsor me? I didn't know. <laughs> Bunnings doesn't have any ambassadors. Do they? They don't need it. I know they well, go down that path of, you know, they have the store um, employees and they're kind of going, it's all very raw. I don't know if it raw. has the same ring to it if you're going to watch Craig Lowndes drive around in the Bunnings car. This oh, I think it does. Do like, you want to like, be the everyman face of Bunnings? Iconic Australia. Yeah. Bunnings. No. It sounds Australian. It is Australian. It comes with a sausage sizzle out the front. It's Bunnings. Do you know what I would you love? You know what I mean? Uh, because, you know, we those, all love it. the smaller companies... Like your tarot caches and that. It'd be great if they did sponsor big sports people. Yeah. Craig Lowndes and Tarot other, Cash. What's the uh, Japanese brand, Tommy, that you Uniqlo? all... Uniqlo. Uniqlo, oh, yeah. Uniqlo, very Amazing. big. They have Federer, don't they? Yeah, they do. Yep. Yeah, 60 that, they, mil they paid for him. 60 mil? Yeah, it's for Federer. You're Ziclo. kidding me. Yeah, it's not it. annually. See, I would, I would love, like Nick Kyrgios, you know, to come mm. out 
with his little YD on his tennis shirt. <laughs> what? You know what I mean? Just, I mean, you're known. And then after, after he has a good win, yep. someone puts a real sh- oversized Shiny. purple shirt on him. Yep. Hey, guys, just want a big shout out to my sponsors, yep. YD. Um, this, is, this one is from the new microfiber range. Um, it's beautiful. Comes with a metallic jacket as well. And a white and a white pointy pair of leather shoes. <laughs> Perfect for the races. Oh. I only just realised. With Fitzy and Whipper. All right, it's back for 2022. I only just realised. You know what I love about it? We learn something. Yeah. And the Fitzy and Whipper show is known as an educational program. Uh, some highlights from last year in terms of the things we only just realised. Uh, I just realised that all the Australian currency, uh, the notes, they've all got Braille on them. You know when you're driving and you want to wash your windscreen and the water comes out? Yep. I used to think that was, like, from the rain, and I didn't realise, like, you actually have to fill it up. I've only just realised that Ryan and Michael are Fitzy and Whipper's first name. <laughs> wow. wow see, I, mean, I mean, these are the things you can learn on the show. I just talked it up, MDG. <laughs> Learned yesterday that uh, a soft shell fish taco, which is my favourite type of, of lunch food, the soft shell, it's not a soft shell fish taco, it's the soft shells referring to the taco. I thought it was you were having a soft shell fish like in a taco. a soft shell crab, this oh, is a soft shell fish. Yeah. Oh, so it's yeah, just it, a fish taco. But it's, it's just a fish taco in a soft shell. Oh. Because tacos are traditionally shell. hard. So when yeah. you get a soft oh. one, it's like a, a, and, and, a, a almost burrito. But do you know what? Do you know what it makes you think? It, it's like you're having a crab or a lobster taco, mm. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Because I was like, well, you're obviously not so, going to have a hard mm. shell fish. Not and bad. So, yeah, There's no such thing as a hard shell fish. But for the, so- yeah. the soft shell crab, how angry would you be out of the family of crabs? To go, my only defence is this armour on my back. <laughs> yeah. oh, I got a soft one, I got a blanket. It's like instead. the lobster roll, mate. I mean, with a brioche bun. Oh, yeah. They sell them for so, they're so expensive, oh, though, aren't they? Yeah, they're worth they're 50 it. 50 bucks for a roll. Huh? Mate, have bunnies Where are ever you? thought about just swapping the snags over for brioche lobster rolls? I don't know. I'm the brand ambassador for bunnings. I'm not sure that's right. Oh. I only just realised. With Fitzy and Whipper. Got an interesting one for you. I only just realised. Tell me if this only dawned on me the other day because I was on the phone trying to organise some stuff and I said, oh. Uh, in February the 5th is a Saturday. And I said, oh, well, I assume that'll be... A s- the 5th will be a Sunday in March, the following month. That's, that's not how that works. <laughs> well, it works the other way, doesn't it? No, it doesn't work anyway. Especially when there's only 28 days in Feb. What, are are what, you thinking of next then. year? <laughs> no, this year. I'm, I was thinking of next but year. But, like, year the by day year. moves year by year. What yeah. I didn't realise is that... The days are the same in February and March. Like, I had no idea. And the person on the other end of the phone what? was going, how have you only just realised this? I didn't know that. that so the 5th no of February is a Saturday. Mm. The 5th of March is a Saturday. <laughs> the 12th of February is a Saturday. The 12th of March is a Saturday. Well, it stands to reason if one number's the same, the next. Couldn't day. believe it. Could well, not get my head around it. It's the only month, isn't it? It's the only two that work like that together. February has 28 days, which we know. March has 31. Yet still. But why Why do you need that information? Yeah. It's just interesting. It's just an interesting way the numbers have fallen but exactly every, the same. Every on... four years that falls out of whack. Yeah, it does. It? Yeah, well, don't worry about that then. <laughs> the 9th of February is on a Wednesday. Guess what day it is on in March? Do you know Wednesday. What? That's the best thing about this segment. You don't you don't have to feel silly. You don't have to feel like a real <laughs> idiot if you oh, bring up something like can that. Can I bring up another one too? Oh, no. Yesterday we we're talking about David Bowie, Space Oddity, right? Lou, our Kiwi contributor here on the production team, says start singing the song. Crowd control to Major Tom. Crowd control. <laughs> well, are there a whole lot of people that have gathered to watch the space rocket take off? Crowd control to Major Tom. It's ground control for those playing along. And Lou, who's now trying to sing along and enjoy the segment. What a beautiful moment that was. So it is a beautiful song. Ella in Cherry Brook, what did you only just realise, Ella? Hey, um, so I only realised a few months ago that when my parents said they were taking my dog to the farm, it meant I'd never see my dog again. Yeah. Oh. 
Oh, you thought um, it was a physical farm. Do you know the yeah. other? Oh, that's that's a tough one. Um, the other the other one as well. The the expression "I'm going to see a man about a dog." Yeah. I mean, is is that? Can you categorise that? What are they going to do? Is there a certain thing I that they're going that was to do to go to the toilet? I thought it was and going it, to catch up with a mate. Can it be anything? Like you know, it, oh. is it? Or, or is it a secretive thing? No, like, like when when your wife asks you, what are you going to do? And you go, I'm going to see a man about a dog. Oh, what, does a that mate mean you're mine, going to do something secretive? A good mate of mine would say that when he went to the toilet, and I assumed it because it rhymed with bog. Ah. Oh. oh. I'm going to see a man about a dog. Okay. Tell me, what does it mean? Well, it actually originated from, um, I'm going to see a man about a horse. <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't now rhyme that, with bog. That's one hell of a session in the toilet. So, which is a British, uh, it's a British term, it was in a play mm. in the 1800s. And what did the guy do when he went to see the man about a horse? Did he go to the toilet or did he go well, get I some milk? Or? I haven't read the full play yet. Go, was it a waterhouse or was it a... <laughs> a about a waterhouse. Go through the script. Yeah, no, I'll get, I'll get back to you Chris, on that one. Chris yeah. Waller in it? Ray in Ganley Heights. What have you only just realised, Ray? Hey, guys. Good morning. Hey, mate. Hey, Ray. Um, you know when you guys get, like, an ointment cream or a cream from, like, a chemist? Yep. I only realised that you can actually use a cap to open the uh, top of the cream. Mm. You can to pierce it, you mean. Is that yeah. right? When you turn the cup yeah. upside down, it's got a little... I bought, I bought a Voltaren the other day, and it actually wasn't one that you can pierce. It was, like, a nut shape. Oh, and it didn't pierce it? So you were, you were just trying to push down on it pretty hard. looked like a bit of an idiot, yeah, did, right? I was going to actually get a shifter out. Oh, and shifter. I realised you can use the top of the, um, top of the cap to open it. Ah, oh, there you go. Do you know, Ray, the good part about this segment is you can say these things safely. You're not being judged. You're not, you did sound a bit silly, but you're not being judged. <laughs> good on you, Ray. A bit like Ray from Rain Man. Mm-hmm. Sophie and Maroubra, what have you only just realised? Okay. So I have always thought that it was rope learning, like R O P E. Mm. I only just learned that it's like I thought it was like you know tying rope, learning a new thing, maybe sailing reference. Yeah. Rope learning. Mm. So it's not learning the ropes. No, that's no. a different thing. Oh, that's a different thing. Learn the ropes. Rope rope learning. learning. Rope learning. She thought it was rope learning. Oh, what is rope? Put learning? it in a sentence for me. Uh, what is rote learning? Isn't it like hands-on? Yeah, it's. I, I think it's learning by hand. By that's hand. what I thought it was. I can look it up for you, but I'm still in the man about well, that's a horse. why you would associate <laughs> it with the rope. Yeah, no, what no, is no it? but what it's people was... who learn by writing it out, is it? Yeah, yeah. As opposed to rote saying learning. Rote. Yeah. Like I wrote it like, to like, remember it. To, right. Yeah, like you took your notes and you just to rewrote study. them. Yeah, yeah study. repetition. Repetition yeah, to keep repetition. information oh. in your yeah. brain. Yeah, right, right. So, yeah. Good one. Oh, We're well well learning this morning. Abby in Terrigal, what did you only just realise, Abs? I only just realised that Whoop Whoop isn't a real place. Yeah, that's whoop, a whoop. tough one. Oh, out yeah. the back of Whoop Whoop. Degroot <laughs> 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 like Enjoyed that one. So, Ab, did you look up Whoop Whoop Whoop? Did you try to visit Whoop Whoop? Maybe we yeah, should go there for Christmas? Yeah, I, was, I met someone and they said they're from Whoop Whoop and I was, like, Googling and going on Google Maps. Messaging my mum and my mum was like, "Are you serious?" Wow. Yeah, well, I met the hottest like... guy from Whoop Whoop last yeah, night. Well, it's a bit like Timbuktu, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Which yeah. is an actual real place, isn't I it? Timbuktu, so. yeah, absolutely, yeah. it is. Whoop Whoop. Mm. I actually because the there, back of Whoop Whoop. There's a lot of there's Bong Bong and there's a lot of there's there Wagga Wagga. Yep. I thought Whoop Whoop could have been a place as well. Yeah. God. <laughs> um, Ab, uh, hang on there. What do we do here? Says we this need is a winner. Tough. Uh, I feel like because her dog died, we give it to Ella from Cherry Brook. <laughs> no, oh, man. I mean that's fine. It's she just... said her dog was going to the farm. She's no. lost a lot, beloved pet. I mean, you weren't going to give it to Ray. You yeah. gave him zero reaction. It's not a charity. Come on, it's, it's not a charity segment. Nice Did you want to give it to Rote Learning? You didn't even know what that was. Yeah, but that's why we want this segment because we learn. No. But you didn't know what Rote or Rote oh, Learning was. A girl's di- a dog died. Give her a prize. Well, oh, well, that... No, it's, it's not your decision. Sorry. It's Sarah's. No. Ella, Thank you've you. got the double chin gin. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, see how sad she good, sounds. Yeah, I hope you get a new dog. I hope. Oh, I will. Oh, that's good news. We ended on a positive. Or you want to? Oh, you want to end on a negative? All right, riddle time. <laughs> ah, riddle, 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 
sat around at the end of the year and we said what worked in 2021. Everybody went, Riddle Time! No, I wasn't a part of this meeting. You sh- I'm sure you were there. You I, said this I was... would not have voted for the... There was a write-up not long ago in Radio Today, an industry website, uh, that said Riddle Time is possibly the best segment ever heard on radio. I don't believe it. Yeah, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Did you miss it? Can you send it through to us? Tagged all you guys in it. I'm sure I did. Uh, Let's get into it, Mandy. Don't be afraid to call through. She already has. Mandy, kick off riddle time for 2022. Do you have a riddle for us? I certainly do. How are you, people? Love you, Mandy. Happy New Year, love. Oh, same to you. Did you have a good Christmas? Yeah, Yeah, had a lovely time, Mandy. Beautiful. We're thinking of you, though, Mandy. Okay. What's your riddle, Mandy? Right, I'm sometimes white, although sometimes I'm black. I take you there, but never bring you back. What am I? Take You're you not there. a taxi, are you? Take you there, but I'm never bring you back. Like, yeah. Ugh, take like you there, but never. going to hell or heaven? Or? It's not, yeah, white light, is it? It's not light, is it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, take you mm. there, but I'll never I'll take, take you back. back. Well, sometimes what? It's on newspaper or anything, though. I don't know, Mandy. What's the answer? It's a hearse. A hearse? Yeah. Oh. Oh. You'll drop us off. Yep. Oh, of course. The, the prize is in the purse for me. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> good on you, Mandy. All right, here's a riddle for you guys. Uh, play along. I can be served in many ways. Some might use me to encourage others to do something. If you're a in, tennis ball. Yeah. If you're in trouble... You'll walk on me. What am I? Not a tennis ball, oh. says. Jumped in early, and I appreciate the interest in the riddle. Thank you. Because I felt Tommy was coming. Yeah, yeah, I was going yeah, yeah, to you were coming at tennis ball. Really yeah. coming hard at yeah. Sarah there. Thank you. Um, streaming live on the Fitzing with a Facebook page this morning, guys, if you are on the way to work and bored. Can you say um, that again, Wick? Yeah, sure. Thanks very much for the invitation to share again, Matt. Um, I can be served in many ways. Someone might use me to encourage you to do something. If you're in trouble, you'll walk on me. What am I? I wanted to say just... Oh, eggs. Dessert. Eggs, Thomas oh. Bryan yeah. Ivy. Eggs. Oh, served in many ways. Yes, yes we get it. poached. Yeah. yeah. What's your favourite? Fried. Yeah, sunny side up. Um, just received, guys, a text message from Big Tony, who's fired one through on a Friday. Is he on holiday? Finally. Finally, the day's return. Riddle time is back, baby, Big Tony's written. Um, he said, I won't be able to ring in today. Here's one for you. Oh, okay, ready, guys? With pointed fangs, I sit and wait. With piercing force, I crunch out fate. Grabbing victims, proclaiming might, physic- physically joining with a single bite. What am I? Vampire? No. Death? No. Uh, right. With pointed fangs, I sit and wait. It's a really good riddle, actually, Big Tony. You've Thanks. stepped up. You've stepped right up for 2022, Tony. Great start. What word should we be focusing on? A trident. No. With pointed uh, fangs, I sit and wait. Peace. A fork. No. Oh. Physically joining with a On single the... bite. Oh, it's a bridge. No, Is it's a speed not. Bridge? Like, uh, a, huh? like a bridge. No. It uh-huh. comes apart. What am I? Physically joining with a single bite. Uh, James a on Facebook No. Has got a... What's a stapler? It's a stapler. Uh, Bang. Oh. Really strong riddle. Yeah. Really, really good riddle. Big well Tony, done, thanks, buddy. What about this one, kids? I have a tail and I have a head, but I have no body and I'm not a snake. What am I? Coin. Well done, Sarah. Light and easy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one was from Leno. Was it? Yeah. No, I like that one. And the myth, the Lennon. Thank you for submitting that. Very easy. I told you to challenge them. Here we go. The last riddle for your Friday morning. Take this into the weekend, guys. Which word is exactly the same if you take all the letters but one... Oh, okay. Let's go again. This one's from Leno <laughs> okay. as well. And Which in, word is ex- quite on set in three, two, one, and action? Which word is exactly the same if you take away all but one of its letters? One. No. No. Uh, I. Thank you, Leno. I. I. No. Uh, you. Which word is exactly the same if you take away all but one of its letters? That would be right, wouldn't it, Tom? You. It's not, I mean, there, there might be other I answers. O U A E. Not all the vowels, uh. no. <laughs> well, Two. I. No. Uh. Ariane on Facebook says T. No. I need you thinking outside the square, everybody. Uh. Scott on Don't Facebook says T. T is. I'm not, that might not be the correct answer. It might be an, an answer. 
Not the answer we're looking for. I feel like you're afraid the actual answer is going to incite violence. Is it, is, it, no, one, is it one letter of the alphabet? No. He just looked over at producer Jess and mouthed, is this right? <laughs> oh, no. Because on, on Facebook, people are putting both uh, U, Q and C. Okay. And to be very well, fair, they all fit. Wait, yeah. that, that's not either. None of those. Not a letter. Correct. That's right, Sarah. Right. It's oh, not a letter. No. It is a letter. Oh, but you said, I said, is it a letter of the alphabet? You said no. In the post or something? Is Sarah's mail? getting a lot closer. Mail? It's a mailbox, says oh. spot on. <laughs> It's circling the train. It's a letter. It's not a letter in the alphabet, mate. It's a letter in the mail. It's mailbox. Riddle time is back. (laughs) (laughs) Everyone still with us? It's a mailbox. (laughs) Mailbox. It's a mailbox. (laughs) Yep. Um, sleep talking. We've spoken about this before. We recently spoke about a young lady who decided to stay at her boyfriend's house for the first time and he discovered that she was a bit of a sleep talker mm-hmm. yes. and loved her McDonald's. I'm on a Tinder date and she's having a nightmare. Huh. Bacon! <laughs> Bacon McMuffin meal! <laughs> Be not... Not only split with a coffee frappe! Mum! That is just the best. Can we hear bacon again? Oh, it's just... I'm on a Tinder date and she's having a nightmare. Bacon! Bacon! Bacon McMuffin meal! (laughs) (laughs) It's so good. That's the best. Um, I'm going to talk about Anthony, not Anthony, Anthony Anthony and Ruth Fort. Now, I don't know. Look, just by the photos we've got here, I don't even know if Anthony was happy in the relationship anyway. Oh, they're a couple of rough I mean, buckets, have, aren't have they? A, have a look at that one. Anthony's, he doesn't smile in, in not one no. of the... This is their wedding day, Sarah. Still yeah. not smiling. Anthony's still not smiling. Well, they say you marry people that look like you, and that in that case... That's they're, they're horrible, crazy, aren't they? Yeah. Gosh, well, look at that. Anthony, well, do you know what? He's not happy in the relationship at all because he has sent his missus to prison... Oh, God. Um, ...after his wife admitted a crime in her sleep. So he went straight to the police station the next day. So his wife um, is a care worker and she looks after old people. And he discovered that she was coming home with a bit more money. Talk, she started talking one day yeah. about... Um, she started talking about an old lady that she was looking after in a wheelchair and how she found out that she was quite wealthy mm-hmm. and how much money she had in her bank account. She had over $100,000 in her bank account. Wow. Anthony, then they went on a trip to Mexico and Ruth um, found all this money that they, he didn't know that they had. Okay. And she splurged on Anthony. And looked after him in Mexico. Couldn't they went believe to Cancun. It. Wasn't just a currency conversion thing. They went to Congo Bongo, oh which was in God. the movie The Mask. Yep. They had a great time there, and she didn't know where all this. He didn't know where all this money was coming until she sleep talked one night, and she spoke about that lady in detail and about how much <laughs> money she had in her sleep. So he decided ripped, her, ripped, her, ripped off the one in the wheelchair. Anthony the next day went to the police station. And off the sleep talking said, I think my wife has been involved with a crime. Wow. They investigated and found out that the lady's bank account had been I mean, drained. We what all know we all know that when we wake up and we've had a dream, we've thought, how did that get into my head? Mm. Like, none of that made sense. And why did those people enter my life in my deep sleep, right? Yeah. So you can't take someone's sleep talking as fact. That, I agree. But also, she's spoiling him. Why would you let the good times end? Wouldn't go you, dob her in. Wouldn't you maybe sit down and have a chat with her first before yeah. you go to the cops? Well, I mean, if you look at that wedding photo, you know that he wasn't happy in that relationship. <laughs> when she admitted to stealing from the person in the wheelchair in her sleep, all these Christmases have come at once. <laughs> do, do you know what, though? Before she'd it's... woken up, he was at the cop shop. Uh, yeah, a bit of a light. Lock her up! Bit of a light load moment's gone off in my mind. If you're unhappy in your relationship... Tell them in. Maybe just say mm-hmm. that your missus was sleep talking the night before. Just record every night. Every night. Good night, darling. I'll just hit record now. Admit all your sins. I'll listen back in the morning. Pretty sure she said that she stole 45,000 rapid antigen tests from a warehouse in Botany. <laughs> it's on the street. Get her. Sacking someone must be the hardest. I've never, luckily, never been able to do it. I mean, probably we'll have a a, a meeting after the show today and talk about a couple of members on this team. I've always wanted to. 
It's not you, fun. You, I could no, see you No, because I want to use that line. Um, grab a seat. We're handing out Mars bars and redundancies, <laughs> and we've just run out of Mars bars. Oh, yeah, that'd be really <laughs> funny. <laughs> see you, mate. Yeah, see you, mate. Boxes on your desk. What, oh. a, what a beauty. If you have had to fire someone before, 13, 24, 10, how do you go about it? The, the, you know, the one positive for, for bosses over the pandemic mm-hmm. is that they can do it via Zoom. So true. I had to do it when I was um, PD here. Oh, you tried to fire a few people, didn't you? No, I did not. There how, was just how many, one. How many, did you have to, how many did you, in your time, how many did you have to get yeah, rid of? There was only one because it wasn't really, it would always fall on the yes. bosses above me. But there was one guy I had to say, your contract's up and it's not being renewed. Did you like oh. him? Yeah, I really. Yeah. Did. Who was oh. it? I'm not, if I'm going to say that. <laughs> did they cry? Um, he, he got quite distressed, yeah. And, and it's horrible because... When you like someone and you've supported them, yeah. was it it's Sean? hard to then say, like, no, you're not, performance isn't up to scratch when you've been telling them for a while it is. I can't mm. see you was doing Sean. it, Sarah. I wasn't the best at it. Oh, and I Sean. don't think I could ever do it again. Did they have a bit of an idea But when they walked into the <laughs> yeah. office? Yeah, yeah they okay, did. got you. Which helped. Um, but no, stop just throwing out names of people. Did you offer, did you try to keep their job? Like, how, how yes. much effort went into trying to save this person and relocate or reposition? Well, or create tough. a different title for him. Yeah, but I when, don't think you put in your best effort. Okay, but don't I feel sorry for Sean. <laughs> um, he was my boss, so no. Vishal wow. Garg. Vishal Garg is mm. the CEO for a company called Better.com. He wasn't better on this day, that's for sure. What happened? Because Vishal had to tell 900 staff oh. over a Zoom meeting. 900? That this was it. How big is better.com? So one of the employees recorded it, and uh, we've had to beep out just a word at the end of it. Mm-hmm. But this is Vishal just delivering the news to 900 employees. The time in my career I'm doing this, and I do not, do not want to do this. The last time I did it, I cried. Mm. Um, this time I hope to be stronger. But we are laying off about 15% of the company if you're on this call you are part of the unlucky group you dude is being laid off can someone run the numbers on on that for me I'm not good with 15% numbers. 15% you yeah, mean? Yeah, 50%. If so how 900? many in the company if it's 900? No, no, 900 staff are gone. Yes. Yeah, so that's right. And that's, that's how many 15%. The, yeah. that's, so 900 divided by 15 that's times 100. huge. I mean, they're a mortgage Tom. company. Oh, I've asked Leno to do it. I'm no good with Leno. notes. On your calculator. How big's the company? Better.com. About 6,000? I think. That doesn't feel right. It's huge. Yeah, 6,000. Yeah. Wow. Okay. No. 6,000 employees. If you're on this, I mean, you would have been thinking, you know, working from home. Oh, yep. God. Vishal wants us as another Zoom. Here we go. Friday, here Big we boss. Go. Oh, what does he want this time? Let me guess. And then all of a sudden, your ears prick up, and someone. then he's just gone, I, last time I did this, I cried. Oh, bad start, because it's not about you. Yeah, it's, it's actually not. 900 people that are going to lose their jobs today. I agree. And you're not one of them. How so don't tell me how tough it is for you. Did you, when the person cried in your office, Sarah, sure. yeah. did you go over and give them a hug? Yeah, of course I did. Did yeah. you? Show a bit of kindness. They're a what, human you, being. Don't do you that. You didn't flirt with them, did you? Well, you know, there's never a bad Yeah, one. now that we're not working together, <laughs> yeah, that's give me right. a kiss. Office. No, yes. what about the guy who Here's misses... Here's your package. <laughs> what a, t- oh, fitzy. And there's a box Jeez. on your desk. <laughs> oh, that too far. I was thinking more, what about the guy who gets exposed for not logging onto the Zoom he was asked to be part of? Yes. He doesn't want to see his boss. He's not he thinks, it. oh, bugger it, I'll turn it on and leave my camera off and just bugger off to another room and watch and Game of Thrones. And doesn't know and still doesn't turns up know. for work. <laughs> Hey guys, I'm here. Oh, we're just double checking your name. You were on the you were going to be on the bad call. <laughs> we we're just talking about this poor CEO that had to get over. Uh, this was a Zoom meeting and had to tell 900 employees, done and dusted, you're gone. I mean, it's not bad over it. You just have to do it in mm. front of your computer at home, I That's suppose. bad news, everyone. You close your laptop and you just walk away. You don't have to I deal mean, with them afterwards. Remember in the GFC when, you know, everybody went through this tough time in business, there was a story of the guy who sat down with his boss and he said, hey, we've got a tough day. The exec team's going to have a bad day. He said, you need to fire 30 people. So this bloke spent the afternoon all day going around. I'm so sorry, we have to let you go. We have to let you go 30 times. Got back, sat down with his boss and the boss says... The other pieces that you need to go to. Oh, 
Oh, that's oh. horrible. So he's just made this bloke fire 30 people in Dog one day it. and then got fired himself. See, that's Ooh. really... That's when you're thinking So revenge. when you fired Sean, did he did cry, Stop did he? saying oh. stuff like that. That's horrible. Amy in Bondi's giving us a call. You work in HR. Have you had to go through this yourself, Ames? Yeah, um, lots of times. So it's... Um, yeah, it can be... You know, when people uh, fire... Um, get fired for the wrong reasons. Um, it's not good, but when you know people have done genuinely something wrong, it's easy. But I specifically had one guy who, uh, me and a colleague were um, performance managing, and he did some pretty bad stuff. He was stealing and a whole range of stuff. Okay. And um, yeah, we didn't realise he was actually recording it um, at the time. Oh. And um, yeah, so it's actually. Um, you can record in other states, but you need permission to do it. And anyway, when we found out, we just said, look, you know, you're not right for the business. And he just started spitting at us. Mm. And, you know, it was just... It spitting was at you? He, he wanted a reaction. Yeah. Did he want a reaction from you, Amy, And then he, while he was recording it? Yeah, well, he just wanted to, you know, see if there was anything that we would say that was inappropriate yes. and so forth. But no, that was just he was upset and he was furious and he... I suppose didn't expect us to terminate him. So what do you yeah. do, Amy? Have you ever had, ever had anybody that's just begged and said, "Stop! Don't do this! Please, please, please." Uh, no, but you do feel that there are, pe- you know, on the other, mm. on the other side of the mm. table that um, you know you do realise that you potentially are impacting, you know, their financial life. So. Yeah, but no, um, I personally haven't had anyone beg, but um, some definitely deserve to be sacked. You, <laughs> Amy, were, so stealing, you can get sacks for stealing. Oh, yeah. So, like, I mean, Maddie DeGroote steals Smooth FM's news every morning. Is That's that a true. sackable, That's events? A sackable offence? Yep. Is that Clearly not. That's Most definitely. Not even remotely. We're all part of the same pool of, of stories, mm. and I just tailor it to this particular audience. Okay. The one, the one piece of advice that, uh, that I was given when I briefly managed the newsroom and then had to, yep. had to let one person go. Yep. Just talk less. And it really does work in, uh, in it because you just get in a loop where you just feel the need to start to feel sorry for them and you just have to stop talking at some stage. Because you're like, if I just keep going, I'll find the right words to make it seem like it's okay, but it just makes it worse and worse and worse. You oh, so, are just a so terrible what, human. You just go, look, we're going to have to let you go. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> went like this. I said, here's your options, toots, Perth or gone. You decide. <laughs> really? And toots. under the management of Perth, uh, they said, I'll just go. I'll, just, I'll wrap it up yeah. there. Thanks. That's me done. Thanks very and much. And that's me done too. Yep. <laughs> shortest, shortest sacking ever. Well done, well done Matt. The job of a reporter, I mean, it's a, it's a tough job. And if you've ever seen a reporter getting ready for a news cross or a live cross, mm. it, you know, you've got to practice, go over what you're going to say, how you're going to kick it off. It's also, also a tough one, and it happens here with us on live radio as well. If you get tongue-tied, you're in a fair bit of trouble. Yeah, that's, it's, hard, it's hard to... That's life. Untie your tongue, mm. Sarah. Oh, yeah, if it's in a double-shaped shank. You're in all sorts of trouble. Also, there's moments, I think, you know, I think over the last couple of years we were talking about languishing and, and, you know, a fair bit of brain fog that's going on with everyone at the moment. People are getting really upset. Short answers. Now, this is in the um, National Hockey League. Okay. And there is a team, Malik McDowell is being interviewed by a reporter and Malik doesn't like this reporter. Um, their team, Malik's team, keeps losing, okay. and the reporter wants answers, and the reporter's just had enough of his response. What do you think's the number one reason for the losses now? Is there is there one thing that you, in your own mind, you're saying we got to get better at that? Yeah, we ha- we have to get better at everything. Would you like to expand on that? No. Nope. You can do that. You know everything. Why are you so pissy, Leon? Hmm? Why are you so pissy? I'm not. I'm just I, answering your question. Yeah, you are. Whenever I ask you a question. I gave you an answer. Not a very good one. <laughs> Fair call. Oh, yeah, it is. Fair call. You Did turned up to do an interview. Do the interview. Yeah. By the sounds of it, the reporter's had enough. Yep. Then there's the reporter that's just started out, and you would do anything to get further in your career. Mm-hmm. This young lady over in the States, um, so she, she is just doing a cross and she's trying to prove herself to the television network that, uh, you know what, I can you do can it. throw me... Do you know what, to the point now, it's got... She was her own cameraman, so she sets up her own what? tripod. Awesome. She's ready to go. There's storms um, happening over in this certain part of, a, of the state, Sarah, and she's got to report on the snow that's coming down and the upset to the traffic. Yep. And then all of a sudden, she unfortunately gets hit by a car. 
and now we're starting to experience, unfortunately, in freeze thaw, we see this water main breaks. I just got hit by a car, but I'm okay. I just got hit by a car, but I'm well, okay, Tim. That's the first um, I'm okay. TV, Woo! We're all good. I'm okay. Yeah, you know, that's live TV for you. It's all good. I actually got hit by a car in college, too, just like that. Cool. Wow. I am so glad I'm okay. Yeah. You're okay. She's a trooper. I think one of the team would have seen it. Oh, there's no team. But you know what? The guy who was at the desk as well, you think he would go, he maybe just cross or come back to him in the studio. Yeah, but give her a minute. How's his first question he asks? So you were bumped in. To me, Tim. Were you bumped down low, Tori, or were you hit up high? I couldn't really tell from the looking. Oh, I, I, I don't even. Do you know if I was bumped down low or up high, sir? I just saw you disappear. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know, Tim. I, my whole life just flashed before my eyes. Tim's obviously deeply concerned for her. <laughs> See, it's not a bad plot. Do you reckon she did it on purpose just to it's further not bad. her career? It's more viral. No, it hurts. Oh, you're the girl that got hit by the car. Mum, can you just come up? I only mm-hmm. do about five k's an hour and just hit me from behind. <laughs> just knock me. Have you seen those videos that go viral of there? I think in Asia, where people will try and get hit by a car for the sake of claiming money and insurance. Yes. And they will <laughs> they will run out, run up and throw themselves <laughs> on a bonnet of a car. There's one guy who goes up and the car stops and then he walks up and just launches onto the bonnet. Yeah. No, there's, a, there's another one which is great of someone launching themselves onto the bonnet, then's on the ground going, you're in a fair bit of trouble. The guy gets out of his car, points to his dash cam. And That's the guy, right. The guy gets up off the ground and goes, yep, you got me. <laughs> no worries, I'm out. Good on you, buddy. Uh, recap of the week. It's been a pretty rough week. I mean, we always start a bit slow on this show, don't we? First week back, a few nerves. Trying to get the wheels in motion again, guys. I forgot how to talk. Forgot about all the radio rules. I didn't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. Is it okay? Tell me it's not too harsh, this package. Oh, look, it's incriminating, absolutely. Um, but definitely plenty of low lights for okay, you. Great. Let's, Let's do it. Recap of the week. Yes, 2022, and it's another year full of recaps. Same old crap. I hate this place. Not much has changed. We are in, we are here, we are on. Certainly Whipper's introduction to the show hasn't. January 2021. 2021. Hey, 2020, get stuff. Yeah, get stuff. January 2022. 2022, hey, 2021, get stuff. Is there an echo in here? And the jokes on the show haven't exactly evolved since last year either. Just quickly, I love Tommy's leather mask. Can you breathe? When the zip's done up. What about the billiard ball, Tom? Does well, that oh. anything? <laughs> yeah, no, I sanitise the billiard ball in my mouth. Oh, bring out the gout. But there is one notable absence in the studio. Man down, man down. Couldn't even last one day without someone in the team yeah. getting COVID. Just... And I'll give you one guess who it is. Pew, 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 pew. MDG. The king of transmissible diseases, Matt DeGroote. We can only assume that he caught it sharing a vape with someone. Vaping has become a bit of a thing. Vaping's for losers. And for the first show of 2022, the guys decided to cover the most serious of the subjects first. I don't want to shake the world as we move into 2022, but the storm that ripped through Ballarat and Victoria killed all the potato fields. We could be out of spuds. Spud short. That is such a load of crap. Ship's gone. I mean, we're kicking off with some big ones in 2022. <laughs> oh. That being said, I think I prefer that topic to the one that came up on Thursday. In the next 15 to 20 years, my mum and dad will be dead and my kids will have left home. Jesus, whip lighten up a touch, huh? I'm 42 now. Mm. When is midlife? You passed it. Don't look at it like that. <laughs> Wake up with a laugh with Bitsy and Whipper. Makes you really sad. Yeah. I know what will pick this up. Let's have a chat to some of the callers that we missed during the break. Jason and Colby. Jace. Welcome back, guys. Uh, How are you, Colby? Don't call me Colby. No, sorry, Jace. <laughs> How was your Christmas and New Year's, Jace? Uh, pretty crap, actually, but anyway. Oh, never mind. Aww. Did you find love during the break, no, Jace? No. Jace, you working yeah. at the moment, mate? No. But we did finally get him excited about his favourite chip. Before you go, we were just yeah. talking about the best takeaway chips. Hungry, hungry Jack chips. I like. <laughs> you didn't have to best. think twice, did you, Colby? It's Jason. Oh, Whipper. Don't call me Colby. No. Sorry, Jace. We had a big announcement from Whipper on Wednesday. Might be a bit bloody rough on Monday, guys. The fellas are heading off for a weekend. 
Cool. Now, you're probably thinking, that doesn't sound like a big announcement at all, Snitch. Why would you bring that up? What are you doing, mate? <laughs> well, it's the same reason that Whippet did a five-minute segment on it that didn't go anywhere. When we get together, it is loose. Is there anything to the story here, or...? <laughs> he just wants you to know. And five points to Sarah. There's a warning, Sydney. We're coming out this weekend. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Good luck. Our favourite chef, Curtis Stone, joined the boys this week. Curtis Stone. Curtis Stone, buddy. What is going on, fellas? And Whipper learned the hard way not to flex your cooking skills. I would do, like, a chicken and some vegetables. I would have cut my Juliet carrots and things. In front of, arguably, Australia's most successful chef. Well, you did just call the Julienne the carrots the Julienne. So, <laughs> you know, is that what there. they are? <laughs> All right, we're still learning. And a quick note to Whipper, don't take a giant sip of water directly into the microphone when we're saying goodbye to our guests. Thank you so much for finding the time. I appreciate it, Curtis. Always a pleasure, guys. I swear to the radio gods, I did not add that in there. Cool. So when Whipper brought this up on the show... Shout out to the short community. We all knew where he was going to go with it. My eyes go to you, David. I yep. man the myth, the Lennon. I'm uh, towering at five foot three. Little did he know that it was going to turn around and blow up in his face. I've never had short man syndrome. I just got on with it. But yeah. you know who does have short man syndrome is Michael Whitford. <laughs> When we have guests in like Megan Gale or anyone like that, yeah. you oh. honestly get on your tippy toes. You bought stacked heels, and we're not joking I didn't about. No, they were stacked heels. Oh. I thought it said stylish heel. <laughs> But as much as Fitzy was defending Leno, he couldn't help but throw this very inside joke at him. I don't know if you guys received an email the other day, but there's a new position that's been taken here at Nova for the Chief Growth <laughs> Officer. Oh. My first thought was send Leno up to his office. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's a joke specifically for people on the Nova email list. Cool. Now, before I go, I've got to mention some of the very exciting Fitzy and Whipper merch we're going to have on offer in 2022. What have we got? I've got uh, a leftover Fitzy and Whipper puzzle. <laughs> oh, um, oh, we lazy. still have 13 left. Hmm, maybe we should brainstorm a little bit. Tommy, if there's <laughs> any marketing or promotion companies yep. out there that are thinking about branding antigen tests... Spit <laughs> yes. on Fitzy and Whipper well, and see yeah. if you've got yeah. COVID. Stick Fitzy and Whipper up your nose. Yeah. <laughs> mm, I feel like we still haven't quite peaked. Used underwear. Oh, uh, getting warmer. New merch. Passing wind into a jar. And there it is. We're not giving away Fitzy and Whippers farts, so oh, stop could it. Could we brand Sarah, it? would you put no. your hand up? Sarah's busy at work again. <laughs> Eat more cabbage. Oh, stop. Happy 2022, everyone. It's good to see you're <laughs> donating a bit out of your mouth at the moment there, Whip. <laughs> you stink. See you next week. The Fitzy and Whippers Show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.